Married Redditors, what was the most obnoxious request made by one of your wedding guests? Story 1. This isn't really a big deal, but at the time it was very frustrating. My husband and I had a relatively small wedding of about 80 people, and we paid for the whole thing ourselves, with the exception of the desserts that his mom bought. Our families were not involved in the planning at all. This is important because a month or so before the wedding, my mom's brother's girlfriend texted my grandmother to say they'd try to come to our wedding. They weren't invited. I have never met my uncle's girlfriend. I haven't seen my uncle in years. And my husband hasn't met him in the ten and a half years we've been together. The most interaction I have with him is on Facebook, where he occasionally likes my posts. They live a few states away and had actually come down a couple months before our wedding to go to a theme park but hadn't reached out to me, despite the fact that we live about 20 minutes from that theme parks. Why would they come to our wedding? My mom is the one who told me that my uncle was going to try to come and I told her, no, he's not, and if he shows up at the venue, he won't be able to get in. She didn't understand why it was a big deal. And my grandma offered the pay for their meals, meaning she thought it would be easier to pay about $200 for their food instead of simply reminding them that they were never invited. There wasn't enough room for them even if she did pay for their meals, and anyway, I didn't want them there. If someone isn't comfortable enough with the bride or groom to speak with them about attending the wedding, they should realize they weren't invited for a reason. In the end, my grandma's solution was to ignore my uncle and his girlfriend's texts and calls, and they did not show up. I don't know if they actually cared that much. A few other family members wanted to invite people, but this was the most annoying one because and mom and grandma were pretty insistent. Oh, and my uncle never congratulated us. Story two. They didn't attend, but my father and his bad person wife tried to make my siblings choose between attending my wedding or going on their dream vacation. Unfortunately, my siblings are not that easy to manipulate and chose my wedding, so they didn't get either trip, and we were only informed too late to get father's ex-wife and her lawyers involved. I, my father, out of my life at that point. All my siblings followed suit within two years. Story 3. I didn't have the best relationship with my mother, and I refused to have anything to do with my oldest sister. My mom lived 90 minutes away and had arranged for a close family friend to bring her. Since the friend was coming, she was invited to the rehearsal dinner. Something came up and she could no longer come. Mom asks my sister to bring her. Sister is not invited. I figured since her son lives nearby, she can visit him during the dinner and just hang at his apartment during the wedding, or with friends, since she used to live here. To note, my nephew was invited and did come to the wedding. Well, that didn't sit well with mom or sister. They thought sis should be at the rehearsal dinner. I stood my ground, and they ended up staying home and getting drunk instead. Fine by me. We weren't paying for the dinner. My FIL planned and paid for it at the country club. My sister would have shown her peach, started a fight, and got stumbling drunk. Hard pass. Story 4. We had made the guest list and arranged for the proper-sized venue. We were allowing most people to RSVP for themselves, and one extra. One of my cousins, whom I hadn't seen in several years, wrote back asking if she could bring her husband, a friend, and their four kids. I was taken aback. Are you serious, seven people? I talked with my fiancé, and we decided, sure. We'd squeeze them in, mostly because I hadn't seen this cousin in so long. It would be really nice to see her again. Day of the wedding, they no-showed, one table, completely empty, and she never bothered to give a reason as to why they didn't show. I refuse to talk to her now, so rude. Still blows me away after all these years. Story 5. For my wedding, my dad had offered to pay for everything, with an interesting definition of everything. Biggest issue. He wanted to have free booze for himself and all of his friends, but not for people he didn't know. Suggested various ways. His first was that he'd park his motorhome right outside and have a friend pouring drinks for people he recognized. We pointed out that was kind of illegal, and if he tried it, it would be a race as to who would call the cops first, us or the hotel. Then he suggested that the hotel have an open bar that took vouchers. He'd have an endless supply of vouchers that he could hand out, and everyone else would get one. At this point, he was expecting me to compliment him on his cleverness and generosity. We ended up with no open bar at all. I think he told his friends to run a tab and bring it to him afterwards. Not much I could do about that. His offer included the pre-wedding dinner. It had to be at a nice restaurant. Include plenty of courses. Prime rib had to be an option. Drinks included, with a cost per head of something rather low. I think it would have been on the order of $10 head, if I'm applying inflation correctly. Ended up with the dinner he asked for, and had the restaurant prepare one bill that covered the first $10 of everyone for him to pay, and a second one for me, although two of his guests canceled at the last minute. 
He told me they weren't coming literally as we were getting out of the car, and since he wouldn't pay for their meals, so I had to cover an extra $20. Their food was already prepared. The reception dinner was a buffet. I think he actually did cover all of that, but then it really was pretty cheap per head. The most obnoxious issue was that he would not pay for anything or even condone the wedding. He phrased it as allow, as if he could have stopped it, unless I assured him all of my fiancé's medical bills were taken care of. About a year earlier, she'd spent two weeks in ICU after a pretty serious auto accident, which generated a lot of bills since she wasn't insured. At the time, he told me to dump her and tried to keep me from visiting at the hospital. I made up some story about it, turning out her parents' insurance could cover it after all. They were military. Dad had never met them and didn't know anything about how military benefits work, so he believed me. It got him to keep quiet for the ceremony. Spent nearly the first ten years of the marriage paying those bills off. Story six. I don't know if this fits exactly, but we had our reception at my in-law's house, and at the end, we were supposed to leave in our just-decorated car, just married, yada, yada, yada. Well, husband and best man are not sober and just decide to leave together without me to go back to our place. So I had to get my friend to drive me across town to my place and yell and cry a tiny bit at my husband and his idiot pal. Story seven. At our wedding shower, one of my husband's aunts, who I'd never met before that day, walked up to me without greeting and said, So those invitations, I don't know if you know this, but I have three grown children, to which I awkwardly replied, Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I have five on the guest list that Ruth, M-I-L, gave me. And she goes, so, what, they just don't get plus ones? Lady, I've never met you or your kids. I don't know your life. I literally just wrote down whatever was on the list your sister gave me. Story eight. My mother tried to pull, if your father is coming, I'm not coming. I told her to shut up and show up because it is for me and my wife, not her. Needless to say, she insisted on giving a, it takes a village to raise a kid. Also, my mother was overly concerned we were serving pork at my wedding. I am Jewish. My wife and the marriage were 100% Catholic. Then it became about the one vegetarian who was attending. Yeah, she can eat the vegetable lasanga. Last but not least, the morning of my mother said, it's not too late. Ah. Uh... Story 9. I'm probably too late to this game, but a friend of ours offered to do our wedding video as a gift for our wedding. She got completely cow-faced at our wedding, and I literally had to ask her for an entire year if our video was done. She proceeded to tell me I owed her a bunch of money for the video, even though she offered it as a wedding gift. When it was done, it was absolute dog cow. Moral of the story, don't let your friends do your wedding video. Would have been cool to have something to show my kids one day. Story 10. Well, not so much a request, more of a general messed up up thing. We had several friends from out of town at our small wedding. The day after the wedding, we met up with our friends for a city tour and food before they took their flights or drove home except my best friend didn't drive home. She didn't get a hotel room either, but she did proceed to get to the point she got kicked out of a bar for falling asleep. Of course, we couldn't just leave her stranded two hours from home, so we Ubered her back to our hotel and made her sleep in the lobby as we got our license notarized and went to see family. The hotel room we had for only two days because that's how long our honeymoon was, and she spent the night sleeping in the chair in our room and making a drunk scene. At least she offered to sleep in the closet. She's lucky my husband is nice because I would have left her peach in the lobby. We are no longer friends. Who flipping does that? Edited to add, we were only in the vicinity of the initial drunken behavior. We literally watched it happen as bystanders. My exact comment was, if I knew we'd have to babysit, we should have brought the kids. Story 11. When I got married, I did not invite my stepmom because my dad was deceased four years before I got married. And I do not get, get along with her. And my mom absolutely hated her guts and will not be in the same room with her for long periods of time. Anyway, the day before the wedding, my mom, D.H., and I are getting food ready for the reception. My mom gets a call from a mutual friend of hers and stepmom. The friend gives this long spiel about how stepmom cares about me. It would mean a lot to her to come. And if my dad were still alive, he would be there with her anyways, so I should just let her come. That was a big hell no, and I almost disinvited the friend right there. We did tell her SM is not welcome, and if she shows up, she will be asked to leave. Story 12. My wedding party was festival style with actual bands playing, open bar service, and food stalls. Even the invitations were designed like party flyers. Cost me a small fortune, but it was totally worth the casual and fun atmosphere without all the stiff tradition and ceremonial nonsense. One older couple from her side of the family, don't even know if they were straight related or friends of the family, just sat at a table in the corner, moping all night, because we didn't follow tradition and ceremony 
and they thought ten varieties of snacks wasn't enough choice for dinner. Dessert was a buffet table with mini donuts, mini cupcakes, pies, and cakes. They disproved there was no traditional ice cake. Only heard this afterward, of course. I paid no heed to moping guests in the corner. Was too busy having a blast. Story 13. Wife and I had a no-kids policy for the reception that night. My dad's cousin from out of state had RSVP'd and already booked, and apparently paid for, his hotel room for a couple nights before he bothered to ask about kids. When he found out, he called and asked if his kids could come. I said they could, of course, be at the ceremony, but no, they cannot come to the reception. But we're happy to provide a referral for babysitting and, or the hotel could probably do the same. He then asked if any other kids were going to be there. I said that the ring bearer and flower girl would be at the reception for a bit, but would probably leave early since they were little. He then said that if other kids were allowed, then why wouldn't his kids be allowed? I said, no, your kids are not invited to the reception. He asked what would happen if he brought them anyway. I said they would not have a seat, nor would they get their own plate of food. He got pissed off and decided not to come at all. For whatever reason, he couldn't or didn't get a refund on the room. Fortunately, he has the same first and last name as me, so the day before the wedding, I went and checked into my hotel room, then let my sister and her friend stay there for free. Story 14 wasn't so much of a request as it was a demand from my brother-in-law. My nephew saw that everyone was getting special dresses and tuxes and wanted in on that action. He was like nine at the time. I laughed, said, sure, why not? Then I hear from my mother-in-law that my brother-in-law laid down the law and forbade my nephew from getting a tux for my wedding. Apparently, my bill thought it was stupid to spend all that money on a tux rental for a nine-year-old. So I informed everyone that if the kid wants to dress up, let him dress up. If money is that big of a deal, I will pay for it. Fast forward to the day we are getting measured and picking everything out. He sees a top hat and really wants to add it to the tux order. His mom, sister-in-law, says she has to ask dad, and he says no BC. He would look stupid if he was the only one wearing a top hat at the wedding literally said it over the speakerphone to the poor kid. My nephew is practically in tears. He really wants the hat. His dad just said he was stupid for wanting the hat. But if he argues or tries to plead his case, he will just get in even more trouble. I pull him aside, ask him if he really wants the hat, and that if he gets it, he has to wear it and take care of it. Don't wear it for ten minutes and then set it down and walk away. He agrees. He will wear it all day and take extra care of it. I tell him to not say a thing about it, and otherwise do as his mom and dad say. The day before the wedding, the tux rentals are delivered to all of the different houses, and I make sure that the hat box is with my nephew's tux, and about an hour later I get the nastiest call, basically asking where I get off undermining him in front of his kids, making him pay for the extra rental cost, trying to make his kid look like an idiot. I wait for him to finish, then calmly and politely ask him whose wedding was it, at what point did he sign the rental contract or toss down a credit card for the rental? And that I would never call my nephew stupid or an idiot. And that even with the top hat and tux, he would still look scores better than showing up in khaki carpenter pants and a polo shirt, which was a direct at him because I had heard that was the best he was willing to put on for a sham wedding. The kid looked like a baller the whole night, and a whole bunch of my friends that came all made a point of either dancing with him or at the very least, complimenting him on how great he looked. Story 15. My dad has three daughters from a previous marriage. They're much older than the me or my siblings, and live in different states, so we barely see them. One of them basically invited herself to my brother's wedding and made a big deal about wanting to come. The day before the wedding, she says she can't make it because she couldn't get a flight. She had months to do so. We don't think she had any intention of coming at all. She just wanted to be invited. I did not invite her to my wedding at all. Story 16. Oh gosh, I have to pick one? I think the most obnoxious is simply because of who she is. Our music, a playlist was made for each part of the night, was playing off of a sound system too on cost, and there was a momentary glitch. This system was part of the venue, so we didn't expect that the coordinator wouldn't know how to correct it, and therefore didn't have a backup plan for the 20-minute period. We did not have music. I was told that I needed to fix the music, or they would leave, so would everyone else. They left less than an hour later. This, folks, was my maid of honor, also sister. Story 17. We reserved a block of rooms specifically for our out-of-town guests. Immediately gave them the info. Reminded them periodically roughly three months, one month, one week, and finally the last day. Lo and behold, like two weeks before the wedding, we started getting phone calls asking if there were any hotels near the venue. Whoever heard of Google, right? 
Turns out there was a big soccer tournament going on that same weekend. It was somewhat poetic justice hearing some of them complain about staying at shady exterior door motels. Story 18. My Sill, who lent almost half of the kitchen supplies for our home-cooked food at my reception, got into a spat with my mother an hour before my ceremony and requested all her kitchen supplies back. She even threw out my drinks so she could take her pictures with her. All worked out, though, because she left and hardly anyone missed her. Hubby and I didn't let it stop us from having a perfect wedding with everyone who mattered there with us. Story 19. I play violin at weddings. I once had this lovely couple who were super great about defining what they actually wanted for me and not changing the lineup every other day, and they were a joy to work with. Tip. Don't tell your wedding musician that you want your music to be girly and soft and pink, like a 1960s Martha Stewart wedding. It will pour out the water them off. I have them as professional references and TBH. I would write a letter of recommendation for them because they were that polite. Mother of the groom, however, was another story. Imagine your stereotypical nosy white Southern. I want to speak to the manager lady who's probably a direct descendant of a slave owner and turn her up to 11. I honestly have no idea how she could possibly have spawned my upstanding young gentleman of a client. Anyway, she was constantly trying to impose her artistic vision on the wedding lineup without actually knowing anything about music, wanting me to do an hour of prelude music. I have no idea how much money I would even charge for that, because it's flipping ridiculous. Trying to change the dates of the wedding rehearsal. I give my clients a $1.100 discount if they have a wedding rehearsal because that's how much I value reducing my own stage fright and generally sticking her nose in her son's special day. The couple obviously told me not to listen to her. I wasn't going to anyway, because I don't listen to the suggestions of anybody but the couple who's writing my check. The old biddy cried her face off during the ceremony anyway so I'd say it turned out all right. Story 20. I was 19 when I had my first wedding, and that ship has long sailed. But my mother was a major control bad person and was adamant that she lived vicariously through me, all while complaining about the price of everything. Her most ridiculous request was that I skip the venue I actually wanted, in a quaint little lakeside town, because we were celebrating my grandma's birthday there, and she didn't want my wedding to take away from the occasion. So I settled for the cheapest venue within 100 miles of us and was completely underwhelmed by it all. For my next wedding, I'm doing exactly what I flipping want to. Story 21. Not my wedding, but an old friend. Maid of honor never showed up. Missed the rehearsal, too. I overheard one of the bridesmaids, I was a groomsman, chewing her out over the phone. That's really poor. You couldn't even bother to call and let her know you weren't coming. I never found out what happened, because when I asked my friend's wife about it a few months later at dinner, she gave me a look and my buddy says, We don't talk about that. Story 22. This isn't a story about an obnoxious request, but it is a story about plain being obnoxious. Long story short, my family situation is funky. I asked my brother to stand up in my wedding, and for months he strung me along on whether or not he would be there. Several months before the wedding, I told him that I needed an answer. Are you in or are you out? He said he would be there with a plus one who required a special meal. Uh, okay, sure. Cue the weekend of the wedding. I invited him to pre-wedding festivities for him to meet my soon-to-be in-laws and their family. He never told me what hotel he was staying at, nor responded to whether or not he'd be at the rehearsal dinner. I told him what time he needed to be at the hotel day of. He showed up two hours late. I guess at least he showed up and expected me to answer all of his questions while I was in the final process of getting ready for photos. Thankfully, the fellow groomsmen were very helpful and got my brother somehow ready for photos in a matter of minutes. I asked my brother to give a speech at the reception. No joke. It was a 20-minute essay on essentially how I am a horrible person and not loyal to my own family. Well, I guess at least he came. Story 23. Doomed to be buried, but I'll share anyway. My wedding was a super small affair, 30 people or so, in an old house my wife and I were renting at the time. That morning I was having coffee on the front porch when a woman I didn't recognize walked through my front gate. I was sure I would know everyone who was coming, although they weren't supposed to arrive for another couple hours. But I was friendly, supposing it was an aunt I hadn't met or something. She walked halfway up my pathway, saw me, stopped, then demanded to know if Bill was here. I told her I had no idea who that was and she looked confused. After a strange back and forth, I gathered that the house had previously been used as a halfway home for transient candy abusers. Okay, well, it's not anymore, so please leave. Fast forward an hour, and my brother and dad are on the porch, drinking beer and eating ice cream. And I hear from inside my dad call out, uh, Can I help you? Are you here for the wedding? So I walk outside and see the same lady standing in my yard again. She looks at me, hangs her head, and curses, Ah, this again, before leaving. 
Story 24. We didn't have a wedding. We just signed the paperwork and had pizza afterwards. The most annoying thing was everyone asking us when we were going to celebrate or telling us we needed to have a wedding. I was totally down for this if they wanted to pay. Weirdest thing, though, no one wanted to pay for the party they wanted me to throw that I didn't want to throw because I wanted to use my money towards our first house. Not a party for everyone. Weird. Story 25. My parents paid for our wedding, but my mill and SEL pretty much took over. My SAIL used to be a wedding planner. She had an itinerary for the whole wedding day. Didn't include my mom or sister in any of the plans. SIL was very bossy. Made my family feel incompetent. Most obnoxious request, though, was when the wedding photographer, that my family paid for, was taking pictures of me and my husband with our families. I was standing with my husband's family when my Emil asked me to move out of the picture. She had pictures taken without me. Her daughter's husband was able to be in the picture, though, while I stood off to the side, and she made the picture without me, her Facebook profile picture. Story 26. Oh, I'm pretty sure I can win this, or more accurately, my wife can. My wife's sister has severe special needs and requires high supervision levels. Remember that as it's important as we go on. My wife was extremely nervous as I dare say a lot of brides are the night before their wedding, spent most of it up being sick. My now mother-in-law spent the night at a local motel with her other daughter, wife's sister, and rang my wife at about 8 in the morning, 2 p.m. wedding, asking my wife to look after her sister until lunchtime s that she could get some rest as she hadn't slept well. Thankfully, one of the bridesmaids told her what she could do with her request, but it just shows some people are 100% selfish. To add to this, my MIL was driving my wife to the wedding and turned up late enough to make my wife 15 minutes late so she could have a nap. Years later, she had the nerve to have a go at us for not treating her like the mother of the bride at the wedding itself. Story 27. Not mine, but sisters. We auto-organized it to the smallest detail. The husband of my cousin said that we should... Change our boring music for classic rock because our music was not good. He even came with a USB pen with his music. We let him heard a couple of his songs, but in the middle of the night he wanted more. We told him that it is okay, but he cued his music list and changed the password of the computer, so we will not be able to change the music again. He didn't told us the password, so we had to enjoy his music all the night, losing our good mood and hours of planification. To add insult to injury, he wasn't able to remember the password next day, so I had to lose a morning trying to find how to recover my computer. Sorry for the mistakes. English is not my first language. Story 28. A friend of mine wore a dress to my wedding because in high school, they had told me they would totally wear a dress to my wedding if they were a bridesmaid, which they were because, at the time, they were a very close friend of mine. This really angered my seal because this friend was a guy. She went on and on about how it would distract from me. Those who love us won't care and they won't be standing by the altar anyway. And she didn't know how to tell it to my niece, who is four. Tell her that they wanted to wear a dress. She demanded that we force my friend to wear a tux. We refused because A, it was something my friend wanted to do, and we would defend him. B, we would not start our marriage by SIL, defining anything about it. And C, it was cost prohibitive anyway. The dress was already purchased. She boycotted the wedding which we both know she would have found another excuse to do anyway, and refused to come. The day before at the rehearsal, my MIL mentions that SIL and my niece would be coming. After planning and paying for a wedding without any savings, I actually remained reasonably calm. Emil was terrified, though. Hilarious. Anyway, so SIL did end up coming to the wedding, where my granny-in-law that it was a buffet, but DH and I had food brought to us. It's so odd almost as if all of their complaining didn't change the fact that we got married and love one another. Weird, right? Story 29. In-laws demanded that we have a Catholic wedding. I'm a card-carrying atheist and would 100% not even entertain the possibility. I politely but very firmly said it would absolutely not be Catholic and that I would not take part in a religion I didn't believe in. They said they and their family wouldn't come unless it was Catholic. Apparently they thought that was a threat or that I would care. I responded, okay, we'll send you pictures. Unfortunately, they came anyway. Story 30. My maid of honor didn't have money to make it to my out-of-town wedding, so she called me the day of completely panicked. Thankfully, I wasn't able to answer my phone, so all I got was her VM later on. She called my soon-to-be husband, who nicely told her to figure it out. She borrowed money from someone else to get to my wedding. Then she decided to come to my gift opening, but only to borrow money to get home. I would have gladly have given her money to get to from my wedding if she told me it was an issue beforehand. Although I guess I may have had difficulty understanding why she didn't have money, having just colored her hair, got her nails done, 
tanned and bought front row tickets to a concert. Story 31. My grandmother asked if my grandfather could come. A silly little thing, but it almost ruined everyone's mood. They had been separated for years, and we, the family, never spoke about it outright. But it was always subtly known that my mother had asserted her father had acted highly inappropriate towards her when she was underage. He also was big into candy in the 70s and on. Well, all of a sudden he shows up and my grandmother lets him stay, lets him take his place at the head of the table, etc. Two weeks go by of him oddly squatting at her home, while we all pretend for her sake that it isn't weird as fudge. We are coming up to the wedding, and then she pulls me aside to say it's like they're married again. Technically, at this point, they are still only legally separated despite like 20 years. I make her ask my mom if it's okay, and Nani buys him a plate. You know it's not going to end well when she is seriously, not flippantly, saying she will keep an eye on him. Be with him every second, don't worry. Fast forward to the day of the late morning wedding, and she starts talking about marriage with him in the car on the way to the ceremony. They get into a fight. He pulls into a gas station. She gets out to pee, and he ditches her. I have to drive, with my makeup half done and my hair done and melting in the heat, out to fudge all to get her while she's crying and apologizing to me. I spend an hour settling her into a hotel room with my mom and frantically trying to cram my bridesmaids into this room so we are all in the air conditioning. Anyway, it turned out he had actually met a woman coming back on a plane from Jamaica and had married her after a one-month courtship, like a year ago, despite never actually divorcing my nanny. Apparently, he thought she was about to find him out. He ended up dissolving back into the distance, only popping up for birthday cards that usually mentioned how bad he was doing and subtly suggesting we could send money to him at the return address. Once the guest list is made, it's made. No substitutions. No upcharge because no substitutions. Listen to your instincts, kiddos. Story 32. Our invites clearly stated no kids. Family friend requested her wheelchair-bound elementary-age granddaughter be able to attend. Our venue was on private property and not wheelchair accessible. I said no. She continued to ask multiple times. Mother and father of said granddaughter were also invited, and the mom actually reached out to me asking me if I changed my mind. The answer was no, and she said, then we won't be able to attend because no one can watch their child. My response? Okay, never let people guilt trip you into something. Story 33. My grandparents lived two hours away and could not drive due to age and eyes. A distant relative that lived in my grandparents' area, and who wasn't actually invited to the wedding initially, offered to drive my grandparents to the ceremony. We graciously accepted her offer so that my uncle didn't have to drive there and back and back again. I thanked her profusely. They showed up mere minutes before the ceremony was to start, but that was okay because at least they made it. But then during the reception, the distant relative, really distant. I think I'd met her once, as a child, cornered me while I was trying to eat the cake we had just and spent the entire time complaining had to drive my grandma, and that the drive was longer than she thought and generally unpleasant. No congrats, no comment on the wedding, just complaints. Story 34. Not a request, but my aunt got and grabbed my brother's two-week-old baby and gallivanted around the reception showing her off by putting the crying baby in people's faces. Same aunt also tried to make out with me on the dance floor in front of my uncle and all the guests. My wife's good family friend brought her wedding planner sister to the reception venue the night before our wedding, and she rearranged absolutely everything. She was not invited to our wedding because she's intrusive and extremely, but she came anyway and made sure to tell my wife and I, you had everything set up all wrong, so I fixed it last night. Story 35. Obligatory late as hell. Ex-childhood best friend is 23 at the time, I was 24. After I moved to another state, our friendship dwindled. No malignant feelings, but I did realize in retrospect that she was toxic to me. I was still pretty close with her family at the time of my wedding and a month before the big day. I'm chatting over the phone with her mom, playing catch-up. At this point, I'd barely spoken to my ex-friend in years, but out of respect for our family's friendship, I invited her family. Her mother tells me on a flip of a dime that she didn't appreciate how I was making her daughter feel. I was boggled, what? I invited your whole family, what is she not appreciative of? I've barely spoken to the bad person, let alone seen her in years. Her mother then asks that I consider making this girl one of my bridesmaids because she felt left out. A month before the wedding, we barely spoke two words in five years. All because her feelings were hurt, she wasn't involved. Stuff you selfish complainers. Story 36. My mill and husband's aunt wanted me to remove my lip ring because, and I quote, when I get older and realize how dumb I look with it in, I'll also realize that I have ruined all my wedding photos. 
They also threw fits about my MOH walking me down the aisle because my dad had already moved to Idaho. My MOH's hair because it was bright blue, her piercings, my lipstick, my dress, which my MIL bought for me. She told everyone how fat I looked on it. Our photographer, who was my cousin and my MOH boyfriend, I had two photographers. It was endless complaining from my mill. We didn't even get to have our first dance because everyone left early.